this is your first time watching a video, joining in, the Sin of a Wife is an acronym that says for the secret consecration for an Esther's noble transformation. And the three-pronged mission of the Sin of a Wife is firstly to prepare you to be the wife that God has called for you to be. The second prong of the mission is to prepare you to be the wife that you want to be. And the third part of the mission is to prepare you to be the wife that your husband needs and desires. So again, I am Shaunika Renee. Welcome so much um, to the Sin of a Wife. I appreciate you being here. And let's go ahead and get started. Now, this we are going to focus on taking charge of what we release from our mouths about ourselves and about our families. So Proverbs 18, 21 tells us that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And as we love and indulge in our words, we eat its fruit, endure the consequences of our words. So basically we have what we say. Now I've often wondered why death came before life in this scripture. I believe that it is because it is easier to speak death over your life than life over your life. Now, you may not immediately agree with this. After all, who wants to admit that speaking death is easier than speaking life? Well, let me put it to you like this. Sometimes it may appear to be easier to agree with whatever is being spoken or seen around you. If you are listening to this, perhaps you are waiting on your husband. Or perhaps you are already married and your marriage is going through a difficult phase. Or even perhaps you are dating and you and your guy are just having a rough time, but you believe in your whole heart that he's the one. Okay? Now, until you have practiced speaking life, regardless of your circumstance, it may seem easier to curse your situation with your words. You may feel like, I will never meet the one. It seems like God is always telling me no whenever I feel I have met a suitable mate. Or perhaps you feel like, my man is never going to ask me to marry him. Maybe I'm not wife material. Or maybe you even feel like my marriage is doomed. It seems like all we do is argue and fight. Instead say, I will meet my earthly king at the appointed time. We are both being divinely prepared by God so that we can fulfill our purpose. I am worth the wait. If you're wanting your man to propose and you know he's not playing games, declare, God, I know that I am in with an integral man. Thank you that he cares enough about me to wait until we are truly ready. I am wife material and he sees my worth. Or if your marriage is struggling right now, say what God has joined together, no man can put asunder. Lord, you are the center of our marriage. Send us wise counsel, restore the joy and love. I stand on your promises. My husband and I will enjoy a beautiful and blessed marriage. What am I saying? Speak life. You definitely want to be happy and live a joyful life, but contrary thoughts like to creep into your mind. If you succumb to those thoughts and speak negatively about your situation, that means that you are speaking death over your situation. You may be aggravated, you may be tired, you may be angry, but only speak life. The word of God says, be angry, but sin not. Sin is not just egregious actions. Sin is anything that separates you from God. When you speak death over your situation by way of negative words, you are separating yourself from God's will and purpose for your life. Remember, Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, wives and wives-to-be, I find it interesting that the verse that we just discussed about death and life being in the power of the tongue, that's again Proverbs 18, 21, is immediately followed by he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. That's Proverbs 18, 22. I believe that as women, we were purposed to carry promise and birth the vision of God. We are incubators and nurturers. Our words are powerful because not only do we carry the promise, 
we must speak and nurture the promise. So as we speak life and only life, we are being that true and faithful wife to our husband. He finds a good thing and obtains favor because we understand the necessity of speaking life. We shape and mold destiny. We set the tone for our families. God lays the foundation for our homes. Our husband builds the homes as the providers, but we as women, we maintain and sustain the home with our prayers and our words. Lastly, beautiful women of God, let us remember to dwell on life affirming thoughts. Proverbs 23, 7 talks about the posture of the heart that a man or woman who they are, who they say they are, they are what they are in their heart. So basically it's saying that so as a man thinketh, so is he, right? Your words and the meditations of your heart must be aligned. It's all circular. Therefore, you cannot just utter words because they sound good. Your heart must align with what you say. You have to constantly watch your words, guard your hearts, and remember your promises. Again, watch your words, guard your hearts, and remember your promises. So when thoughts come which are contrary to your promises, pull down those thoughts which try to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. What did he say? What has he promised you? Watch your words. Guard your hearts. Remember your promises. You are Abba's daughter. Again, watch your words. Guard your hearts. Remember your promises. God bless you, my beautiful sister. I am praying for you always. It's a heartbeat.